evening, everybody. Welcome to a surprise live stream here at the Jaden Stitches Show. Welcome to the craft table. We've got a surprise for you this evening. <laughs> um, before we get started, we've written up a free graph and pattern that is Fair Isle Style Plus in its thema theme. Um, it's going to match up with the rest of the blanket if you want to use it. We were chit-chatting uh, a couple of live streams ago about maybe doing some letters and numbers. We thought we would create the year, 2023, um, and we want everybody to have access to it. So this is a slightly special pattern. It's two pages. It's available on our website. It's free. Mr. and Stitches is about to explain to you how you can go and get it. So you can grab it um, and either download it and print it or just download it and have it handy. Um, and you can make a sampler square along with me this evening. Um, this graph also has the written instructions on this page and it's uh, got right and left-handed um, instructions. So if it's right-handed, it says, if it's left-handed, it says, and that's per row because this is not a mere image uh, graph. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to get into it. Mr. and Stitches, would you like to uh, welcome everyone and also explain to them how to go and get their Hello, own copy? Hello everyone. Welcome to our live stream. Woo! Very excited. Um, okay, I hope everyone can hear us and see us okay. So I'm just going to make this a bit larger. Let me see if I can do that. While you're doing that, I'm oh. going to just say in the meantime, um, I've got my 5.5 millimeter hook, also known as the I or the 9. It's the same one I've been using for the calendar blanket this year. Pair of scissors, yarn needle. Uh, maybe like 21, 22 yards of white, my color A, and um, 9, 10 yards of the green, which I'm going to use as my color B for the demonstration. Um, obviously, you might want to use black and white, but uh, whatever you want, very little yarn. We're just going to do the sample square. And uh, like we did a couple of live streams ago, I'm also going to just um, put the border on it tonight because I will be using the sampler square in my um, my little my little storybook uh granny square blanket that I'm working on okay so um, what what you're gonna do if you've never done this before those of you that know um, you're gonna go to our website so jada in thank into, you Steve <laughs> into your web browser oh also shout out someone um, we got a membership milestone from somebody that was Heather. Heather, Heather sent a membership the, milestone. The yes, started. Heather, you're still a member. And thank you, Uncle Steve, for gifting a membership. <laughs> and uh, congratulations to Karina for winning it. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I'm going to try to be quick here. So you're going to go to our website. For those of you that don't know, you're going to click on Pattern Workshop here. This is where the majority of our free patterns are. Um, and then you are going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. So there's... Um, there's all kinds of free patterns here. You can check that out when you have time. So I'm going to zip down as quickly as possible without making everyone too dizzy. See all the free patterns we have? Plenty, 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 plenty. Tons of them. Tons of them. Keep going to the bottom. And we're getting close. Here we are. Okay. So this is what you want here. Fair Isle style counter blanket 2023. You're going to click on this link right here. And this is going to open up the PDF file. And then you can either use it on your tablet computer or you can print it out. So that's how you get to that. Yeah, you can print it out. You can just have it on your tablet or your phone or even just the computer open next to you if you want. Uh, or in another window if you're watching on the computer. And um, you can get it now, you can do it along with us, you can get it later and just sort of sit and watch. Uh, but just so you know, that's how you get it, that's where it is, and it's free for everyone. Subscribers, members, and new folks alike, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, that's a freebie for you, and we also thought it was a nice way for you to see how we write up a pattern that has specific right and left-handed instructions. Um, so if you're still learning how to read patterns, this is an excellent kind of thing to grab because we're going to go through it row by row and um, you can understand how to read a pattern and a graph a little bit better. Um, I see Marie's having a rough week. Marie, we're sorry to hear about your Nana passing. Uh, our condolences. And um, to anybody else who's having kind of a, a rough go of things, we hope that you find a little bit of a break hanging out with us this evening because that's what we're here for. Happiness and... Uh, 
inspiration and a little bit of peace and company when you need it. Uh, certainly we love to peace and company with everybody. So <laughs> um, we got some membership milestones rolling in too. Michelle, member for 41 months. Hi everyone, glad I could make it here today. We're glad you could make it too. Laurel, a member for four months at Merino. Thank you. Thanks for all the fun. You are so very welcome. And just to reiterate, a big thank you to Uncle Steve for gifting a new membership to Karina. All right, let's get going. You want your scissors, a yarn needle, your 5.5 millimeter hook, also known as the I or the nine, or whatever hook you might be using as you build your calendar blanket 2023 Fair Isle style along with us this year. Um, that's the one I'm using. Size four, medium weight yarn, very little since we're just basically making a sampler swatch. But if you wanted, you could build this one graph into a square, sort of a, a graph section on your overall 2023 calendar blanket. You might wanna fit it in maybe at the end of December, like instead of doing six full repeats of the December graph, you might do five and then the graph um, for the calendar blanket year. Uh, that's an option, or you might just want to make a little sampler um, for another blanket you might be working on. But we know a few of you were interested in learning how to do letters and numbers, and we thought doing the actual year might be a great place to start. So here we go. I'm going to put my B aside. I'm going to get my scissors, my yarn needle out of the way. I'm just going to leave the pattern here. I'm going to pick it up and, and sort of refer to it now and again, just so you can sort of see um, the graph, and you can kind of just see it sitting on the camera. I'm going to leave it here the whole time. So if you're zipping along, you can kind of like see it if you're not going to go grab the pattern right away. Um, this one has left and right specific um, instructions, because as you know, if you are right handed, you read our graphs, our graphs are numbered. So there's row one, row two, row three, row four, the numbers sit at the edge of the graph where as a right handed crocheter, that's where you would read the graph from. So row one, right to left, row two, left to right. If you're left-handed, it's in the reverse. Row one would be left to right, row two would be right to left. So I will be explaining this as we go. Uh, plus, in the actual pattern, if you are more comfortable reading instructions as opposed to looking at the graph, the instructions are all here in the pattern, right-handed, say, for row four, that's where things start to change, and then there's a left-handed for row four. So make sure when you're reading the pattern, you're looking for row four, right-hand, if you're right-handed, and then row five, right-hand, if you're right-handed, or if you're left-handed, you're looking for the specific left-handed row instructions, row four, left-hand, row five, left-hand, row six, left-hand, etc. The first three rows and the last three rows of the pattern are super simple because they are all just plain old double crochet. We have a membership milestone from Lorraine. Hey, Lorraine. Who has been a Silk member for 31 months. Thank, Thank you. you very much. And a new member, Tammy. Welcome to Tammy. Welcome to Alpaca, Tammy. Thanks for joining the family. Welcome, 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 everyone. All right, we are going to begin with a slip knot on our hook. We are making a sampler size. So this is going to be one repeat of the graph. It'll basically be this large. Uh, before you add a border, if you're going to add a border, it's going to measure around 16.25 by 16.25 centimeters or six and a half by six and a half inches. If you add a border on, you're basically upsizing to about seven and a half inches, almost eight inches, depending on the yarn weight, uh, your tension, the hook, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Slip knot, chain 21 to begin. I think I've got 21. I always double check and count. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 21 chains. We are going to skip the first two chains and double crochet into the third chain from the hook and double crochet into each chain all the way back. That two chains that we skipped, that is the turning chain that counts as a double crochet. So the chain two at the beginning of every row counts as a double crochet. By the end of row one, we'll have 20 stitches. And these 20 stitches will be represented by the 20 
blocks on the graph, which once I get to the end of row one, I will just pick up the picture here and just show it to you again. Like we said, the pattern is available for free over on the pattern workshop page of our website. That's jadainstitches.com slash workshop. So it's the pattern workshop. When you get there, just click on the pattern workshop page. If you're on a tablet or a phone, you might not see all the little um, page titles. You'll just see at the top, like a bunch of little lines. Just click on that and that'll, that'll give you the menu of the entire website because we have several pages in our website. I've got the link to that page um, pinned at the top of the chat. It should be, there should be a blue bar. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's a blue bar up the top. There's a link that'll take you right to our website. Like we said, it's free. Um, just scroll to the very bottom of the pattern workshop page. There are over 50 free patterns there. So help yourself to any of them. Um, and at the very bottom, you'll find this one. We also have, in case you're new to the Fair Isle style calendar blanket, we have one other graph pattern that works in conjunction or in concert with the rest of the blanket. It's the awareness ribbon graph and pattern. That's also free on the wet pattern workshop page. Um, so make sure you grab that too if you're really enjoying the graph work this year. That is 20 double crochet, including that chain two at the very beginning. That's 20. If we look at our graph, we are down here, row one. So row one, right-handed, you were reading from right to left. Left-handed, you were reading from left to right. Technically, this is a mirror image graph uh, of row one because no matter which direction you read it, you're gonna get 20 stitches all in your color A or your white, I'm using white as my background, but whatever your color A is, uh, that's what you're gonna have, 20 stitches all the way across. We chain two and turn with our color A at the beginning, or I should say at the end of every row, that chain two counts as the first double crochet in the next row, and row two and row three are all the same. We're just double crocheting in every stitch across. You'll have 20 stitches at the end of every row. Mr. and Stitches has also got um, the... Uh, uh, I thought I would pop it up. I still had the page open here. Mm -hmm. So that's the awareness ribbon is about a third of the way down the page. So the new, the new 2023 is at the bottom and this one's roughly a third of the way down. Yeah. And like we say, we've got oodles of free patterns there. Uh, they're free. So please help yourself to any of them. And if you're just learning how to read patterns, um, they're a great way to start because most of them have a tutorial to go along with them. So you can print the pattern off and just uh, sort of follow along as we do the tutorial. So I'm gonna double crochet in every single stitch all the way across. I will continue to have 20 stitches at the end of row two. I love these little samplers. I enjoy making them, I enjoy how they look, and now that I'm turning them all into little granny squares, I love them even more. <laughs> and it's really nice to see a whole bunch of new faces, or I should say names, I can't really see your faces, I'd also but... like to take a second to reiterate, um, you do not have to be a member to take part in the live streams or the chat. Nope. You just have to be subscribed. Yep. Subscribers and members. Yeah. Um, that's it. And uh, you only have to be subscribed for, for five minutes. Oh, and being a subscriber doesn't cost anything. That so. just helps. Uh, the reason we do that is it helps keep uh, like the bots away from the chat. Otherwise, it gets garbled up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you just have to be subscribed and anyone can, can take part. But also, we do appreciate our members. So thank you very much. Yes. Oh, and speaking of members, Summer has a great question for a poll. She says we need silly polls. And I just thought, you know what we should do for a poll? Uh, very quickly, can you read crochet patterns? Yes or no? Mr. and Stitches, we need a poll. When you get to the end of a row, make sure your last double crochet is worked into the top of that chain two. Don't miss it, otherwise it'll throw off your stitch count. So I'm just gonna double crochet into the top of that chain two, and now I've got 20 stitches in row one and 20 stitches in row two. That chain two counts as a double crochet. So that's row one and row two done. This is like the easiest, <laughs> this is the easiest graph ever so far. Chain two, turn, and double crochet all the way back for row three. And once again, row one, right to left for right-handed or left to right for left-handed. 
Row two, you're over here, right-handed, you're over here, left-handed, but either way you go for row one, two, or three, it's all the same. Row three, right-handed, <laughs> we're over here, working right to left on the graph, and lefties, you are working left to right, uh, but like I said, rows one, two, and three are completely mirror image, so it doesn't really matter which direction you go, and it's there's no color changing yet, it's all just uh, white. Now, if you were going to be using this uh, on repeat, I would recommend the use of spools, um, but because I'm just doing a sampler tonight, I just have my yarn ready to go here. I'm not bothering with a spool, but I am still going to use the same color changing rules. So I work over top of the color that I'm gonna be carrying, and I'm also gonna be making sure that whatever side of the blanket my yarn is joined on, I finish on that side, etc. Um, so even though I don't have a spool in, in play, I'm still going to sort of treat the yarn that I'm using as my B color as though there was a spool attached to it. Double crochet into every single stitch all the way across. I'm so glad to see so many folks here. Mr. and Stitches is going to get that poll going. We can all all vote. I love these little polls. I love silly polls. I think Summer's got a got a good point. Silly polls are great. So the poll is up. Please feel free to take part in the poll. Do you read crochet patterns? Yes or no? And I actually am very curious to know how many people read them. Last double crochet of the row is always worked into the top of the chain two from the previous row. If you're ever in doubt, put it down, pause, and count them up. Make sure you've got 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Remember that chain two counts as a double crochet. So there's rows one, two, and three complete. And here we go with the fun. So rows four, five, six, seven, and eight are all special. There is right-handed specific and left-handed specific directions. We are going to start building the numbers. I'm working from the bottom up. I think it's important to mention that because I know some people, um, when they're doing their calendar blanket, they've been working top down because they're actually doing their blanket so that January sits at the top as opposed to the bottom like I'm doing. Um, so I am, just to let you know, reading this from the bottom up just so you know, in case you are thinking about using this video later on when you go to add it into your calendar blanket, if that's what you're gonna do. But if you're just working the sampler along with me, you might as well work it bottom up. You don't need to do it top down uh, because it's gonna be the same either way. And it's just one square. Row four, we're gonna get going. Mr. And Stitches, I, I hear some, this, um, some this, noise. I uh, suggestion slash idea from Donna, one of our channel members. I would love to find a graph pattern with a bowling pin and ball. A bowling pin! That is a great idea, That's I love that. That's a great idea. I will make a note of that. Yeah. Let me just uh, pull up a little Jada notepad. challenge. I'm gonna get my notepad going here. I will literally write the word bowling pin. Great, love that idea. Super duper, okay. Here we go, row four. I'm gonna pick up the graph. Row four, we are over here for right-handed. Left-handed, you are starting over here. So left-handed, I should say right-handed is left to right, right-handed, le right-handed is left to right, left-handed is right to left <laughs> for row four. And in the instructions, we've got specific instructions here. I'm going to read out the right-handed instructions first, then I will read out the left-handed instructions. So, right-handed, the chain two that begins the row is this first stitch, that stitch in color A. We immediately switch to color B, so we're entering color B here for four, color A for one, color B for three, color A for one, color B for four, color A for one, color B for four, and then color A for one, and that'll be full 20 stitches. If you are left-handed, you're starting over here, your chain two is the same thing, it's in A or your color A, or in my case, white. Immediately your B for four, A for one, B for four, A for one, B for three, 
A for one, B for four, A for one. So that's if you're left-handed. And here we go. We all chain two and turn, and that's the same whether you're left or right-handed. And we are all going to engage our spool or our um, B color for the next couple of stitches. Actually, for four stitches, whether you're left or right-handed, the next four stitches are all in color B. So I'm going to treat my, um, my slip knot as my yarn over for a double crochet. I'm going to pick up a loop with my color B and double crochet. That is the first use of the color. And I'm just going to make sure that this doesn't look too silly. Not worrying too much about the side. Three more double crochet using B and we're carrying color A. So make sure you're working over top of color A. I'm also just going to work over top of my little short tail. You do not have to do that. You can weave it in later if you like. At the end of the fourth double crochet, before you finish it, there's a color change coming, whether you're right or left-handed. So you pick up A and you finish off that double crochet with A. So now that's the first four double crochet of the row, whether you're working left or right-handed, are in B. Then we all work a double crochet in A, but since there's an immediate color change, you only work the first part of it. Switch back to B. I don't want to twist my yarn. Now, if you're working right-handed, the next three double crochet are in B. If you're working left-handed, the next four double crochet are in B. Remember, we're all carrying color A because we want to make sure that it doesn't get left behind. So three in B for right-handed, four in B if you're left-handed. When you get to the stitch just before the color change, remember to pause, you're finishing that stitch with color A. There is one stitch in color A between letters. So you work the first part of it and then finish it with color B because you're switching back again. And remember, you're always working over top of the color that you're carrying. For right-handed, we're about to work three double crochet in B. If you're working left-handed, you're about, I should say four double crochet in B. If you're working left-handed, you're about to work three double crochet in B. So once I'm gonna say that again, right-handed, four double crochet in B, left-handed, three double crochet in B. So the right-handed are at the bottom of the two, the left-handed are at the bottom of the zero. And we're carrying A. And remember the stitch before the color change, you don't work the whole thing, you pause and finish it with the other color. There is one A in between numbers, so you only work the first part of it before you switch back to B again. For right-handed, it's four double crochet in B. For left-handed, it's four double crochet in B. So we are both back to the same thing. We're finishing the row with four double crochet in B and then switching back to A for the last stitch. And that is row four. There we go. I'm dropping B because that's it. And I'm working my last double crochet in A into the top of the chain two. That is row four complete. Baking utensils, coffee cups. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm going to take a quick, quick moment away here and I'm going to make some notes because I love these ideas. What else have we got here? We've got coffee cup and baking utensils. What a cute idea. We do have a birthday cake uh, as a crochet plus pattern, a Fair Isle style plus pattern in our Etsy shop if you wanna check that out. Uh, but you can technically, I just wanna say, you can, an elephant, oh my gosh, that's so cute. I'll put an elephant in there too, elephant. Um, you can mix 
the graph patterns together if you want. So you could have sort of like a whole bunch of sunshines and then maybe a coffee cup and then a sunshine. You could have like a few sunshines, a birthday cake, and then a few sunshines. So you can mix in a single graph in between all of the other ones if you want. They don't, uh, one row does not have to be all the same graph. Um, you can add an entire row in of a completely different graph if you wanted. So for example, um, let's say that you had a whole lot of birthdays in August, then you might want to do an entire row of birthdays. That's entirely up to you. Um, that's sort of the fun of doing graph work and why we've designed all of our graphs to be 20 stitches by 11 rows. So if you want to just put one graph in in place of an image and then continue with the regular image or do an entire row, it's entirely up to you. Um, lots of flexibility with this year's blanket. And like I said, I'm making an entire, this, this, this just happened. I've been doing so many samplers. I decided I had to put borders on them. And now I've got absolutely got to make a little storybook blanket. So that's happening. Um, I just love the way it's working out. Okay, so that was the end of row four. We all chain two and turn with our color B, or I should say color A. And I've got color B on the front now of my work. Let's take a look at the graph. Right-handed, we're over here on the right side. Left-handed, we're over here on the left side. For right-handed, the first chain two counts as your first stitch in A. We immediately switch to B for one. Then it's A for seven, B for one, A for one, B for one, A for one, B for one, A for four, B for one, A for one. So we're working kind of a, a funky row here. Lefties, your chain two with the color A counts as your first stitch. Just like the right-handed, you're immediately a B for one, then it's A for four, B for one, A for one, B for one, A for one, B for one, A for seven, B for one, A for one. So here we go. We've all chained two with the color A and turned. We are immediately working B as one stitch, whether you're right or left-handed. And there's gonna be a little bit of a carry, so make sure that you work over top of both the carry and the actual color A. So I wanna just grab that B yarn, making sure that it doesn't sort of pull across. And there's my first, oops, I didn't wanna do that. I have an immediate color change. So let me do that again. All right. Yarn over with B. I'm gonna grab it so that I don't, I, I kind of catch it. So I'm crocheting over top of that little tiny reach. Work the first half of it and I'm immediately working back with my A to color change. For right-handed, we're about to work seven in A. For left-handed, you're about to work four in A. When you get to your last stitch, whether it's the seventh if you're right-handed or the fourth if you're left-handed. Make sure that the color you're carrying, you just give it a little tug just so it's not sort of bulging out underneath your other stitches. Work the first half of that last stitch, change colors to finish it. Right-handed, you're working one in B. Left-handed, you're working one in B. So you're only working the first half of that stitch before you immediately turn back to A. We're all working one in A. So the first half, we finish it with B. We're all working one in B. Work the first half, you're finishing it with A. We're all working one in A. Work the first half, you finish it with B. We all work one in B. Work the first half, you're finishing it with A. There we go. And now we switch again. So we've got B for one, A for one, B for one, A for one, B for one, no matter which direction you're going. 
And now, if you're right-handed, you've got 4 in A. If you're left-handed, you've got 7 in A. Remember to work over top of your color B, because you're carrying it. Before you finish your last stitch in A, we've all got one more stitch in B to work. So you finish that last stitch with B, double crochet your last stitch with B, but not the whole thing, drop the color, finish it with A, and then for left and right handed, the last stitch of the row is A. So you dropped your B. That was row five. So we're working kind of now we're in the middle section of our numbers. And um, you should have what looks like the beginning of a two, a zero, a two, and a three. Mr. Stitches, how is the chat going? Um, it's going fine. A Everyone's football. chit chatting. There's all kinds of uh, ideas for the uh, squares. A lot of really good ideas. I like that. What else have we got? Uh, here? Everyone's sharing ideas. There's all kinds of wonderful family support going on. That's because our family's amazing. We have <laughs> the poll is still running. Okay. There's 158 votes. Beautiful. Maybe we'll let it run a little longer. No, you can finish that one. Yeah, you Fi sure? Yeah, finish that one and we'll start another and we'll see. Uh, okay. We'll, we'll start with a silly it. poll. So let's see. Um, we've got, can you read crochet patterns? Yes, 66%. I'm learning, 22%. Absolutely no, 10%. That is amazing. So 66% of you, the majority can read them. And 22% of you are giving it the good old college try. I love it. For the 10% of you who say, no, I can't read them, don't be afraid. It's really easy to read them, especially if you start with our patterns <laughs> and our videos, because we write our patterns like we... Uh, teach our videos. So if you've got a pattern and you're following along with the video, you will very quickly see how easy it is to read the pattern. Um, you'll understand kind of what the repeats mean. Um, you'll understand sort of the, the, the shorthand. We always include a little legend in our patterns. So like R equals row, uh, ST or STS is stitch or stitches, etc. So you, you read the stitch legend most people use the same stitch legend. Like we've got kind of a more commonality of stitch um, short form happening across the entire crochet world. So uh, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to give it a try, especially if you've got a picture of what the finished project should look like. That will also really help you um, and read the entire pattern from start to finish before you get going. It's kind of like a recipe. You would read an entire recipe from start to finish before you start to cook because you don't want to be surprised partway through. And a crochet pattern is exactly the same thing. All right, a little sip of my drink. Let's get in to row six. We are working on the halfway mark of the pattern. So we're all gonna chain two with white or A and turn. So chain two, turn, whether you're working left or right-handed, and here we go. Right-handed, we're over here on the left side. Left-handed, you're over here on the right side. Both of us chain two to turn, and that chain two is represented by the first stitch of the row. Right-handed, we're immediately working four stitches in B, one in A, one in B, one in A, one in B, one in A, four in B, two in A, three in B, one A to finish. If you're working left-handed, your chain two is right here. That's your first stitch in A. You're immediately into B with three, A to two, B for four, A for one, B for one, A for one, B for one, A for one, B for four, A for one to finish. So here we go. That chain two counts as the first stitch of the row. We are all immediately changing colors to B. For those of us working right-handed, we're gonna work four double crochet with B. Lefties are gonna work three double crochet with B. I'm gonna grab that little carry just so it doesn't kind of fall out of step with the rest of the color work. And I'm gonna work over top of my color A. 
we have a membership milestone from Bonnie. Bonnie! Thank you so much. Like Bonnie says, member for 42 months at Silk. Thank you. Like that we can use a way to memor memorialize this calendar. Bonnie, I agree completely. This blanket um, is, I mean, we're trying to make them all kind of fun and unique. Um, we were excited to get some graph work in because we hadn't had a chance to do that yet. Um, and we've been just having so much fun creating graphs, um, you know, that are not necessarily month specific. We're trying to get a lot of the more classic Fair Isle style imagery into the blanket, but so many fantastic ideas have come in from the community. And we also had a bunch of fun like, ideas ourselves that uh, we're just delighted to, to try and kind of bring as many uh, into play as possible. And I think having the actual date on it is kind of a cool idea. Uh, Summer, Summer with a member for 51 months of Vicuña. Thank you, Summer, honey. I am think I'm being dragged downstairs to the pool. I guess I'll be leaving soon. See ya. Hey, enjoy the pool. I would be in one right now, too, if I had it. That sounds great. <laughs> All right. So we are going to switch colors. If you've worked four in B for right-handed, three in B for left-handed, work that last stitch halfway, finish it with A. If you're left-handed, you're working two in A. If you're right-handed, you're only working one. Remember that you, if you've got a color change immediately or whenever you're about to color change, only work the first half of that stitch. So one in A and then one in B, one in A, one in B, one in A if you're right-handed, two in A if you're left-handed, and then four in B if you're left-handed. So that's the difference. It's a little bit different. You're only working the first half of those stitches when you're only working one of each color. Just take your time. Okay. For right-handed, once you've worked A, B, A, B, A, or the first half of A, we're now going to work four in B. If you're left-handed and you've just finished your four in B, you're about to go A, B, A, B, A. Straightforward enough. Right-handed, we switch back to A. We're going to work two double crochet with A. And if you're left-handed, you are working four double crochet with B. So lefties, you're over here. Right-handed, you're over here. Right-handed, three in B, one in A to finish. Lefties, it's four in B and one in A to finish. Prissy Pot. Zero one says, "Hey Jada, <laughs> we need to see you on a daily basis. Aww. Seven days a week of Jada and stitches. <laughs> That's what I get. I get seven days a week. <laughs> I only want six, but I get seven. He gets seven days a week of me, and this is why we have squirrels. <laughs> when I filled out the application, I only asked for six days, <laughs> but somehow I get seven. <laughs> Every week, seven seven straight days. Seven straight days. <laughs> Aww. All right, that was row six. We are halfway through that graph square. We should all be looking at the bottom of two. Um, actually, I've got it. I've got it backwards right now. So if let's just chain two and turn, and then we'll all be looking at the front. <laughs> we'll all turn. We are. We should be all looking at the bottom half of two, zero, two, and three. That first chain two counts as a double crochet. It's the first stitch in row seven. I'm gonna have a quick sip of water. And here we go. Row seven, right-handed, we're on the right side. Left-handed, you're on the left side. For the right-handed, that chain two counts as your first stitch in A. We immediately switch to B for one. Four in A, one in B. Four in A, one in B, one in A, one in B, one in A, one in B, four in A to finish. That's row seven if you're right-handed. If you're left-handed, we're over here starting. 
you're immediately starting with four in A. So your chain two counts as the first stitch and then three more in A, B for one, A for one, B for one, A for one, B for one, A for four, B for one, A for four, B for one, and you finish with one in A. Here we go. Right-handed, you're immediately switching to B. Don't miss that carry. Left-handed, you've got four double crochet in A, so that chain two counts as the first one, and then you're working three more. So that first, there's an immediate color change for the right-handed, and then we're into four stitches in A. All right. First four stitches are in A if you're left-handed. The first stitch is A, then B, then four in A if you're right-handed. Lefties, you're going B, A, B, A, B. So one stitch each in colors B, A, B, A, B. For the right-handed, we've got one in B and then four in A. One in B, then four in A. Mr. and Stitches, I heard you giggling. I'm giggling because I'm getting trolled in the chat. Oh, <laughs> we need another poll. We need something silly. <laughs> oh, yeah, another poll. Any ideas out there? Well, let's do something silly. Um, let me see. Oh, yes. I'm also chatting video games with everyone. Oh. All the naughty nerds. Me and the naughty nerds are chatting video games. Mr. Um, and yes, the naughty nerds. Yes, Barb, we have pre-ordered Fay Farm. <laughs> We are both very excited for it. I can't wait till it comes. Multiplayer. Um, woohoo! <laughs> I also apologize to all our American friends for the Canadian smoke. Oh my gosh! <laughs> On behalf of all of Canada, I apologize for the smoke. It is. It is. Uh... Um, to be honest, we haven't really been following it lately. We we were following it back. I don't know what a few weeks back. Mm-hmm. But uh, I didn't even know they were still going, to be honest. Yeah, it's really something. Okay. So, just to... poll ideas. Let's get some poll Let's ideas. Let's go poll ideas. Something silly. What's... Oh, that's a great one. Are you left or right-handed? Left or right? That's a great poll. All right, I'm just finishing up row seven. So just to catch everybody up, if you're working right-handed, you worked one in A, which was your chain two, one in B, four A, one B, four A, one B, one A, one B, one A, one B. We're gonna finish with four in A. If you're working left-handed, your first chain two counts as your first stitch in A, and then three more in A, one in B, one in A, one in B, one in A, one in B, four A, one B, four A, one B, one A. So row seven, that's my last in B. So right-handed, you're dropping B to work the remainder of the row, which is four double crochet, all in A. And don't forget that last stitch is worked into the top of the chain two. Sometimes it's a little tight, so don't miss it. There we go. All right. We've got almost the full bottom of two, zero, two, three. Row eight is exactly the same as row four. So if you're right-handed, it's exactly the same as row four. If you're left-handed, it's exactly the same as your row four. I'll read it out again, but you're basically doing exactly what you did down here in row four. So as you're working, just look down to row four. It's that first row where the colors changed that will complete your 2023 and then it's three rows of plain old double crochet in color a which in my case is white so rows four five six seven and eight are the only ones where we're working color change and they're the only ones where there's left or right handedness um, sort of to keep in mind we're all going to chain two and turn and right-handed you're on the left side 
Left-handed, you're on the right side, and it's exactly the same as row four. So right-handed, the chain two counts as your first stitch in color A, then it's B for four, A1, B for three, A1, B for four, A1, B for four, A1. If you're left-handed, your chain two counts over here as your first stitch in color A, then it's B for four, A1, B for four, A1, B for three, A1, B for four, and you finish with A1, just like row four. Look below your row and do it exactly and you'll be on track. You're going to have a reach if you're right-handed. So when you work that first stitch, we're working the first four stitches in B, you're gonna have a reach, so make sure you work over top of it. So those first four stitches are in B if you're right-handed, the first four stitches are in B if you're left-handed. We Switch have a. a membership milestone from Carol. Carol, our doll maker. <laughs> Carol's been a member for 55 months at Silk. Thank you so much, Carol. This is a cute block. Thank you. I'm behind because I'm still working on dolls. <laughs> it will be for a while. I'm using up a lot of little balls of leftover yarn. Oh my gosh, isn't that perfect? I love being able to use up little balls of leftover yarn for something super cute like those dolls. If you haven't seen Carol's dolls, we've, we shared them a bunch of them in a post um, yesterday before we had our final Dolls of the World live crochet along. So if you haven't yet been to our community tab on our YouTube uh, home page, check out the community tab and you can sort of scroll through all of the pictures of Carol's dolls. She sent me a couple more today too, so I'll be sneaking them in somewhere again. I just love her dolls. They make me smile so much. I love the hair, the hair. Oh my gosh. She does better hair than me, for sure. <laughs> okay, it, the chain two in A was the same for left or right. It was then B for four, whether it was left or right. If you're right-handed, it's three and B. If you're left-handed, it's four and B. I should say one in A each, and then three in B for left for right-handed, four in B for left-handed. I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. So one A, and then we switch back. Just remember to look down below at row four, and you'll know exactly where you are. A little water break. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. For those of you that are having trouble with the chat um, or just the video in general, just um, leave the live stream and then come back. It refreshes the connection. That usually helps. <clears throat> Pardon me, everyone little fluff in my throat. As a crocheter, you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm just looking below me at my row four and I'm making sure that I'm doing exactly the same thing with my color changes and my stitches. So that way I know I'm not lost. We all finish the row with four double crochet in B, and then one double crochet in A, whether you're left or right-handed. And that is it for the color changing. I'm gonna snip my yarn right now, just so it's out of my way. So 
So that's B complete. And I'm going to chain two in turn. That puts me back to the right side of my block. And you can clearly see I've got <laughs> 20, 23. It matches the graph. Now it's just three rows of straight double crochet using color A. Nice and easy. So whether you're left or right handed, doesn't matter. All three rows are identical. 20 stitches per new, row. New poll coming in. Yahoo! Is this the left or right handed one? No, I was going to do that one right now. Oh, okay. Oh, you did another one. Are you getting Canadian wildfire smoke? Hey, great question, mister. No, 51%, thank God. Yes, 39%. I'm truly sorry for you. I'm glad you're inside and hanging out with us. Not sure, 9%. If it's too hot or smoky outside, stay in and hang out with us. We are so happy to have you with us. And uh, having a little live company is a wonderful thing on a Tuesday evening. New poll is up. Mr. Incisions has a new poll up. Make sure you vote. This is fun. I love these polls. <laughs> So the smoke is still really bad in some places, eh? Yeah, from what I'm hearing in the chat, um, the smoke is. I think it. I think it all has to do with the um, the jet stream. It all depends on where the jet stream is is going. Sometimes the jet stream goes into Canada and then it'll go all the way down, like to Texas and back up. It's um, it's pretty amazing. All right, that is row nine, all double crochet in color A. Should still have 20 stitches, so make sure you give it a quick count if you're unsure. Chain two turn, <clears throat> excuse me, and double crochet in every stitch all the way across with color A for row 10. Exactly the same thing again for row 11, and that is the sampler made. I love this. I like that six of the rows in this graph are just straight color A, double crochet in every single stitch all the way across. And it's really just the five rows in the middle where we're working the numbers where you really kind of have to pay attention to whether or not you're left-handed or right-handed. Um, if you are working right-handed, you read a graph from right to left for row one. If you're left-handed, you read a graph from left to right for row one. Um, and you should be reading all your graphs the same way for the duration of the entire project. So let's say you can work right-handed or you can work left-handed. You kind of have to make your mind up that you're going to work one-handedness <laughs> for the whole project. Um, whether that's right or left, it doesn't matter, but you want to stick to the same handedness or you want to read the graph the same way for the entire project. And then you won't end up kind of, you know, with anything that looks a bit backwards. Now on row 11. If you're looking for the free pattern, it's over on our website. It's on the pattern workshop page. Um, Mr. and Stitches may have, I don't know if you've got the direct link to the pattern workshop page or just the direct link to the work to the website. Um, but if you go straight to the website, you want to click on the pattern workshop page. I have both. Okay. Um, so the Pattern Workshop page, we have multiple pages on our website. So you want to click on the Pattern Workshop page. Scroll all the way to the bottom because that's where the new pattern is. But if you, uh, there's over 50 free patterns there. So please help yourself to any or all of them. And if you're really enjoying the graph work and you haven't yet tried out the Awareness Ribbon, uh, and you know, maybe that's something near and dear to your heart. We have an Awareness Ribbon graph and pattern. You can obviously substitute in any color you need uh, for the awareness ribbon of your choice and that is a freebie we put up in golly February I think might have been it was very early in the year um that's it I have got my little graph 2023 20, I love this <laughs> I'm gonna quickly weave in my tail I guess I can probably snip my a yarn too row one row two row three 
four, five, six, seven, eight. These are the rows where we have the color change. I snipped my B. Row nine, 10, and 11, straight crochet with uh, color A. So it's just 20 stitches per row in color A. I will snip my yarn. I'm done with that. I am going to add my little double crochet um, shell stitch border that you saw me do in our samplers to Granny Squares live stream we did a little while ago because I am including this sampler in my storybook blanket that I am building. It's actually kind of building itself. It just sort of decided to make itself because I have all these samplers. Um, and I am using this green. Um, and since I'm building it in 2023, I thought it was a very apt little sampler to add. So I will be doing that right after I finish weaving in all my tails. So I'm gonna weave my green tails in first underneath similar colored stitches, taking care not to pull too tightly. BMS, can you use an alternative beginning chain besides the chain two? Would that still work? Um, do you mean like a chain three turn or uh, because chain two I find is a nice, just because of the nature of this work, the chain two typically looks like it's about the right height of the double crochet in this case. If you have super tight tension, you might want to use a chain three at the beginning of every row. But if you're doing that, then you're going to want to begin your foundation chain with one extra chain than we do. So for example, the foundation chain on all of the samplers for this project are 21. If you need three turning chains at the end of every row, you need to start with 22 and begin your first double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook, not the third one. Um, but I recommend that if you're doing this along with us, that you do it the same. Um, so if you have tight tensions, just try to chain your two at the beginning of every row a little looser than maybe you usually do. Um, but that is the number of chains that you need just to get you kind of to turn around and it brings you up to the right height of the rest of the double crochets. Uh, also, we are doing a border on our blanket like we do every year. So um, you don't want anything that stands out too much or too different from the rest of your double crochets because it is going to be a factor when we add our borders. Just uh, so you are aware, mm -hmm. everyone is just absolutely loving the little house square. Oh, you thank you. Showing. So this is our little cottage. Um, this is the little cottage version of our, we've got the Fair Isle style house, which was the May official graph uh, and pattern. And then um, I just couldn't stop. So I wound up creating a little cottage version too. So if you uh, feel like getting a little crazy, we've got a, a cottage, a Fair Isle style plus pattern. It's our cottage that's available in our Etsy shop. And that's one of my little cottages that I made. Um, I love that too. It's so cute. Do you crochet right or left-handed? Right-handed, 90%. Left-handed, eight. I use my feet, 0%. <laughs> well, you know what? I've seen people use their feet for all sorts of things, so. 0%, I, there was a 1% there earlier. Where did the 1% go? Maybe they changed their vote. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, I would love to know, is that about the sort of the typical breakdown of right versus left-handedness in the culture at large, is that like about 90 to 10? Or is it is it just that a lot of lefties just learn right-handed and stick with it? Because I have to say, um, if you are a musician, let's say you played piano or some kind of instrument before you learned how to crochet, picking up one-handedness versus another wouldn't be terribly difficult for you because you've already got some kind of ambidextrousness um, familiarity in being creative. Um, so I think maybe, because I've heard a lot of people who are actually left-handed just crochet with their right because that's how they were taught. I think we've discovered an error in YouTube's mathematics. Really? Yeah, because it's 98%. It should be 100. You are so right. So there should be 2% should be I use my feet. You are right. So 
Feedback. Feedback to YouTube. Hmm. There is a glitch in your math. Skewed graphs. <laughs> Skewed pools. All right. So here we go. I've got a little bit of lovely late e late evening sun pouring into the craft table. I just love it. Ah, 2023. That's the sampler built. I am going to add my border now. So let me just have a little swig of water. Susie's a drummer! Then you can probably crochet with your feet, too. <laughs> I know drummers. Drummers are, are a, a different breed of human being. <laughs> Maybe YouTube doesn't like feet, says Jessica <laughs> Okay, I don't think we're going to go there. The next tutorial will be with your feet. <laughs> That's going to be Friday's tutorial. I will definitely try that. <laughs> Um, okay, I'm going to put a border. This is the shell stitch border that I added to. I'm going to get my little pattern. Actually, no, I'll leave that there just in case some of you are still following along. Um, we did this on a live stream a little while ago. So I added a shell stitch border to my sampler. I'm going to start in the top of the chain two at the beginning of that last row, row 11. I'm going to start with a standing double crochet because why not? And I'm going to work uh, two more double crochet, chain two, three double crochet into it. I'm not chaining one in between my shells. I want a nice tight little border this time. Um, I've also got my tulip one done. Same thing. Standing double crochet, two more double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, all into the top of that chain two to begin. Ah, I love these. These are so cute. I've got a bunny here. Little bunny done. Exactly the same thing. I'm going to skip three stitches to begin and then three double crochet into the next stitch and then for there on out the rest of that row is skip two, three double crochet, skip two, three double crochet. And I also did my flower. I really like this green. This green, I used this in the Tunisian calendar blanket and I've still got a mountain of it left. And it's just, I feel it's very neutral. So I've decided to border everything in it this year. I'm just going to put that aside. Okay, here we go. Standing double crochet. I'm going to join with a standing double crochet in the top of that chain three, or ch sorry, chain two that began row 11. Making sure I don't spin it around too much. Come here, you. There we go. So, standing double crochet, or you can join with a slip stitch and chain two or three, whichever you actually like for the shell stitch. Chain three is what I usually do when I'm doing a shell stitch, but standing double crochet, two more double crochet into that same stitch top. Chain two for the corner and three double crochet. That will complete the corner at the very beginning of my sampler border edge. Now to make it work for the math, I'm going to skip the next three stitches, find the fourth and work three double crochet into that. I am not chaining in between shells. I want a smaller space and I don't need that extra chain. And from here on to the end of the row, it's just skip two, skip two, three double crochet into the next stitch. I'm going to have seven shells running across each edge of my little sampler square. Skip two, three double crochet into the next stitch. Get some slack on my yarn here. Skip two, three double crochet into the next stitch. Skip two, three double crochet into the next stitch. And that leaves us with Skip two, three double crochet into the top of the last stitch. And since this is a corner, I'm going to work three double crochet, chain two, and three double crochet. There we go. Now, before I go any further, let's take a look. 
there's corner number one, here's corner number two. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven shells running across the top of my square, just like this one. I've got three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet in the top of that last stitch and of the first stitch. And now I'm gonna work down the side. I'm gonna skip a row, which would have been row 11, and work three double crochet into row 10, skip row nine, three double crochet into row eight, skip row seven, three double crochet into the end of row six, skip row five, three double crochet into the end of row four, skip row three, three double crochet into the end of row two, skip row one, three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet into the bottom of that first foundation chain all the way down here. And that'll give me seven shells running down the side of my square. So that's the first one. I skip row 11, I find the end of row 10, and I work three double crochet right into the end of that row. I'm working right around that last double crochet or chain three, whatever it winds up being. Need a little more yarn here. Skip a row, three double crochet into the end of the next stitch. Or the next end of the next row, I should say. Try not to drop your yarn. Skip a row, find the end of the next row, three double crochet into the end of it. Skip a row, find the next row, three double crochet into the end of it. Skip a row, find the next row, this is the end of row two. So you're working three double crochet into the end of each even row. Skip row one, find the first foundation chain underneath that first stitch there and work three double crochet chain two, and three double crochet all into the same foundation chain. And there is corner number three complete. That also gives us seven shells down the side of our square. So let's just pause. There's corner number two. Here's corner number three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven shells all the way down the side. This is how we mathematically turn what is somewhat rectangular of a shape into a functioning square, basically. Okay, now we're going to mimic along the bottom what we did at the top. So it's every skip two, three double crochet into the next chain, skip two, three double crochet into the next chain. So you're skipping two stitches because we skipped three over here and we want to make sure it's the same thing to mirror the top. So that's the first stitch. I skip two, I find the bottom of the next or the third stitch and work three double crochet in the bottom of that stitch. Skip two, three double crochet, skip two, three double crochet all along the, what was the foundation chain row. Until I get to the end and it's skip three and then three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet into the bottom of this turning chain way over here. It's actually the bottom of that chain two. So Squeeze it in if you have to. One, two, making sure I got the right place. If you're ever lost, just put it down and look up. Your shells should align with the shells worked across the top of what was row 11 of your square. Skip two. Skip two. This is shell number six across the bottom. I've got one more to go, it's the corner. So I'm skipping one, two, three stitches. Here's the chain two over here at the end and I'm working into the bottom of it. Three double crochet. Chain two and three double crochet, all worked into the same chain. That's corner number four, I'm on the home stretch now. Let's 
just double check. Here was corner number three. Here's corner number four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven shells all across the bottom. They are directly in alignment with the ones up top. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing up the last side that I did over here. So I'm working three double crochet into the end of each even row. So rows two, four, six, eight, and ten. Again, no chains in between shells. No need for them here. That's row 11, so I want the end of row 10. Three double crochet. Skip a row, three double crochet into the end of the next row. Regina would like to see a raised or textured graph. I'm guessing kind of like one of those sort of like bubble or bobble graphs. I love those, those are so cute. Great idea, Regina. Skip a row, three double crochet into the end of the next row. Skip a row, three double crochet into the end of the next row. That's row 10. That's the last shell. So that'll be shell number seven, technically, even though it's the sixth one you've worked. One, two, three, four, five, six. The first shell of the row was worked to begin. You're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of that either uh, standing double crochet that you joined with or the top of the chain three, whichever you began the row with, doesn't matter, they all work. And fasten off. I'm going to weave in that tail and there is a pretty decent sized square that says 2023. I love it. Let's get these tails woven in. It's looking good. Just... I didn't know you were gonna border it. Oh yeah. It's fancy. It's the uh I, I did that because we, we just did them um we just did that with the other ones and I thought well since I'm gonna be including this in my little um storybook sampler blanket I will add the border just so if anybody wants to see that again, you know, I can sort of show it. Um, we will be doing a very special border for our actual 2023 Fair Isle style calendar blanket, but that'll be in December. So okay, a while I'm to go end yet for that. The, I'm gonna end the last poll of the evening. Here it comes. Yes, the bobble stitch is a yarn eater, Dawn. Mega yarn eater. <laughs> But oh, so cute. It's a good one to do if you've got a lot of yarn to use up. Uh, or if you're looking for something, if you like that really textured look, because it is pretty cool. I like that. Can you crochet with your left and right hands? No, 91%. Yes, 8%. That only works out to 99%. <laughs> So 8% of you can crochet ambidextrous. You can go left or right handed. That's amazing. That is something I cannot do. I cannot crochet, or I can't use a crochet hook with my left hand. Uh, but you know what? That's not something I've practiced yet. Maybe I should do that down the road. All right, um, let's put this right side up. There we go. 20, 23. I've got my four corners on a nice little border. So I added a border. The border is not included in the graph and crochet pattern because this is basically made to fit with the rest of our calendar blanket series. But we've now done two uh, live crochet long tutorials on just adding a border to your sampler square. So if uh, you want to do that because you're making a pile of samplers and you want to include them in a big blanket and just border them, um, then that is how I'm doing it, of course, it's uh, in our other live stream, we actually discussed multiple ways you can add a border, uh, but I'm going with a classic shell stitch because I love that granny square look. And uh, I think it finishes things off really nicely. That definitely says 2023. Um, all right, everybody, if you've got questions about the pattern, the graph, um, or anything to do with the Fair Isle blanket, please feel free to ask it 
now. I'll answer a couple questions or um, leave them in the comment section down below and I will definitely get to it at some point in the very near future. Um, just to quickly reiterate, if you haven't picked up the free pattern, please do. Um, if you're learning or if you're collecting patterns or anything like that, we've got quite a collection of free patterns over on our website. We are designing them with the idea that we want people to be able to learn how to read patterns. Most of those patterns have a free tutorial to go along with it. And we definitely wanted everybody to have access to the 2023 graph and pattern. Uh, we not, I'm, 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 I'm still not sure whether I'm going to include it in my official calendar blanket or not, but I know a lot of you wanted to include it. Um, so we, we wanted to include that as a freebie for everybody. And it was also important to us to include this as a free pattern because it has right-handed and left-handed directions um, explicitly. So if you are right-handed, you're looking for the right-handed directions. If you're left-handed, you're looking for the left-handed directions. And we wanted you to see how that is written. Um, to match up with the graph because the other free graph and pattern we've got is the awareness ribbon and it's a perfect mirror image So whether you're le reading left or right on the graph the actual written directions are the same for everybody So there is a bit of a difference and uh, we thought you guys might like to see that if you keep a crochet project journal This is a good one for that if you're keeping a journal on the calendar blanket in general That's another nice one to add to it. And of course, we've got I think oh, 11 Fair Isle Style Plus patterns available in our Etsy shop in addition to the six official ones, regular Fair Isle Styles that we've got so far that we're doing tutorials for. And I guess this is technically tutorial number seven to go along with this year's Fair Isle Style blanket. So um, you can include this in your official blanket if you want, uh, or just do a little sample square like me. I thought it might be fun to sort of experiment with numbers. I know some of you were asking about numbers and letters, so I thought this was a good one to do. And, um, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to take a couple. While I sip some water. Few people were concerned for your wrist. My wrist? Does your wrist feel like it's swelling a oh, little bit? Oh yeah, I know you can see it. It's it's pretty much it's pretty swollen. Um, it's not as bad as it has been, so it's come down a little bit. The sun, I think, has helped. I've got my, my vitamin D dosage. But thank you very much, everybody. It's it's a little stiff, but yeah. you know what? Crocheting in the evening is not as bad as trying to crochet in the morning. Um, so it, it probably looks worse than it actually is. <laughs> I, uh, I, st I, feel, I feel still feel pretty limber, so I was able to get that um, done tonight. But thanks, everybody, for your concern. I hope if you suffer from any kind of repetitive stress injury or um, any kind of arthritis or rheumatoid or nerve damage or anything at all, please remember to listen to your body. I know it is just so desperately tempting to crochet all night or just, I just, I, you know, one more row and I'll get it finished. Or, you know, you, you've got a deadline and you're kind of looking at it going, oh, I just want to do it. Or you just love it so much. You want to keep growing. But um, don't crochet or knit or anything to the point where you hurt yourself. So please, please, please <laughs> listen to your bodies. Um, they are telling you whether or not it's still okay to crochet. <laughs> um, um, and then take a break, do a little stretching. And, um, you know, if you're still a little stiff, just go back at it again in the morning. Crochet with Diane says, I got the free pattern, yippee, and also purchased another pattern. Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Diane. Appreciate Thank you so that. much. Um, it doesn't look like there's much in the way of questions right now. Just um, someone asked, I think it was Joanna asked if you had a splint. A splint? Is that for, is that like a, a wrist, one of those wrist protector things? Um, I do have, <clears throat> I do have, I have two sets of, of gloves. Um, I've got the copper glove, uh, the copper um, spandex type gloves that if you have any kind of arthritis, you might, might want to consider a pair. Um, I forget what mine are called, copper something, but um, I find they help. They're a compression glove that has copper in them, and I find they help when I'm really having a bad sort of flare up. And I do have some wrist guards that have a splint in them that keeps my wrist immobilized if I have to drive for a long distance or something. But uh, luckily, lately, I haven't needed them. 
we have a request from Cinnamon Stitches. Cinnamon, hey Jen, how's it going? Is it feasible to make a Frankenstein square for October? Well, baby, you know I'm going to try now. <laughs> I'm going to write that down. <laughs> Frankenstein. Lorraine is waiting for coffee from me. I, I thought I already sent that out. <laughs> Frankenstein. Did I not send that coffee, fresh coffee, fresh hot coffee out with cream and sugar? I'm going to have to do that. We did, um, I don't know, if, if any of you saw our skeleton we just put up. Uh, let me grab him. This is our little skeleton. He's now up in our in our um, Etsy shop. I, Krista was sort of talking about a skeleton. I I love spooky stuff. I absolutely love it. It's I, I like I like a little a little scare <laughs> every once in a while. Um, I think we'll definitely be doing several Halloween and Christmas themed squares. Um, we've got we've got a lot more to come. Um, if you are a family member, Silker Vicuña level, we are going to have a members version of uh, one of our, our plus patterns available as a perk over on the members website. Um, we're trying to do that each month. Um, this month was the, what was this month? Um, the graduation cap. That was the, I think that was the, was that the free one? Or was it, I can't remember now. <laughs> I think it might have been that one. Uh, I think we've been putting up two Fair Isle Plus patterns in the shop per month um, because the ideas are coming in thick and fast. But um, I have to say, for Halloween and and, and um, Christmas, those are those are just two two events that are just so full of fun symbols that I I'm going to be busy making <laughs> making extras. I think for those those two banner events. Um, but this is our first Halloween one. And that went up into the shop this past week. So if you haven't seen that, our spooky little Jack is in the uh, is in the shop. I also think this would look really cool with an orange background. It would look like a jack-o'-lantern. You could do the black eyes and the orange background or yellow features in an orange background, kind of like a lit pumpkin. Um, this way he kind of looks like a, a scarecrow or a skeleton. Actually, I guess you could make him look like a scarecrow if you did this black on brown, too. So very, very good fall slash Halloween kind of little pattern. Um, <laughs> but yes, I'm going to try a Frankie. Did you sure. mention a storybook blanket? Yes. Someone was talking about a storybook yes, blanket. Yes, this is my... I'm going to be taking all of my um, samplers that I've been building this year for the blanket. Because I keep making a lot of them. I'll make one and then I'll make another one in different colors. And sometimes I'll experiment with different ideas. I've got, I think this is number 44. I've got so many. We're only halfway through the year. So look out. This is going to be a massive blanket. Um, and I feel like it is going to tell a story. I have so many pretty little squares that sort of just say something um, that I think I'm going to try and take all of my squares and arrange them into some kind of story. I don't know what the story is yet. I think I'm going to let the squares tell me that. Uh, but uh, we will see that come together by the end of this year. So look forward to that. That might be a fun little little video. Anyway, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this little surprise live stream crochet along. Uh, again, free pattern. It's for everybody. So please make yourself um, available to it over on our website. Uh, we've got, it's the pattern workshop page. There are more than 50 free patterns there. Please help yourself to any and all of them. And uh, this one is a nice way to get accustomed to working with numbers in a graph situation and also to sort of see the difference between left and right handed directions written versus just following a graph. And uh, we will see you guys Friday, if not before. I don't know, I've not been able to put my hook down this week. Mr. Stitches and I are like, ah, it's hot. Let's stay in and, and have fun with everybody. <laughs> Uh, but it was just nice to hang out with everyone on a Tuesday evening. So we hope you had fun. Um, if you've got any questions, feel free to leave them down below in the comment section or pop into our Etsy shop. We're always happy to help you there too. Um, and we've got all of our crochet patterns are on three, four, 15% um, off still this month until the 30th. And like Mr. and Stitches mentioned in the last live stream, we have an extra special um kind of bundle uh, event coming in August. So if you have a big list of crochet patterns that you want to pick up, then um, maybe wait until August because we're having a special uh, special sale in August. Um, but if there's only one or two you want to pick up, or three, then uh, it might be a good time to do it now. And that includes all of our Fair Isle style patterns. So if you're collecting them or if you had a few in mind, then um, please make use of the sale. And thank you very much if you do. We really appreciate it. It helps us out 
tremendously. Uh, so thank you, and we will see you guys Friday. And uh, Mr. Stitches, do you have anything else to offer? Um, I would just like to thank everyone for all the amazing ideas. We had so many awesome suggestions. I'm going to go the through the square, chat and so see we'll them all. So we'll have to skim, skim through the chat together and yes. make some notes. And also, I'd like to thank all the lurkers out there because we know we have our lurkers that love our show. Mm -hmm. So a big thank you to the lurkers who have their hands busy. Georgie, I see you. dishes or cleaning or whatever you're up to. Georgie, I see you about the Thanksgiving patterns. I'm going to include some of those too. Um, just so you know, we've got a maple leaf square. Um, I did that one and had it out for July first for all of our Canadian family members you may have wanted to add a maple leaf but that maple leaf looks amazing in all the fall colors so if you're looking to start your fall collection the maple leaf uh, graph and pattern is perfect for the fall too but I have some more ideas for Thanksgiving coming as well but thanks for reminding me <laughs> and yeah have a great night everybody um, check out the website check out the Etsy shop we'll see you back here on Friday for another video and um, have a wonderful week take care take care of each other stay safe and crafty and we'll see you soon <laughs>